SpaceX just conducted its most ambitious and powerful test to date with its Starship Mars rocket and it's amazing. The firing of the engines made a loud sound that would stop anybody's heartbeat, even for a split second. For a split second. That fireball was really intense and I'm telling you right now, I'm watching this at work and I had my earbuds on and... Anywho, the event and the blast were recorded by cameras installed closer to the Super Heavy Booster 7 by Lab Padre, and as always, huge thanks for his hard work. The static fire test took place at 1.51pm Eastern Standard Time on November 14th at Starbase, which lasted for about 10 seconds. Full test duration of 14 engines, SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk confirmed in a tweet shortly after the static fire. Static fires are common pre-flight trials in which a rocket's engines are briefly ignited while the vehicle stays anchored to the ground. And with that said, SpaceX is gearing up for a flight with Starship, as Musk said, before the end of the year. And this latest static fire could be a big step toward the orbital liftoff. It doubled the previous highest number of Raptor engines that SpaceX has ignited during a Starship engine test. And with the success of firing up 14 of its 33 Raptor engines, SpaceX's Starship booster has likely become the most powerfully active rocket in the world. Throughout the history of spaceflight, only three or four other rockets have produced as much or more thrust than Booster 7 could have theoretically produced on November 14th. But the Soviet Inertia and N1 rockets and the US Saturn V and Space Shuttle were all retired one or several decades ago. Only SpaceX's own Falcon Heavy rocket, fifth on the bracket and capable of producing up to 2,325 tons of thrust at sea level, or 5.13 million pounds, is still operational and comes close. Powered by 33 upgraded Raptor 2 engines that SpaceX says can produce up to 230 tons, which is around 510,000 pound force each, Super Heavy could have produced up to 3,220 tons, or 7.1 million pounds of thrust when it ignited 14 of its engines earlier today. That likely means that Starship is now the fourth most powerful rocket ever tested, slotting in above NASA's space shuttle, but below the Soviet inertia. And even if all 14 engines never throttled above 73%, SpaceX's Starship booster likely still produced more thrust than any other active rocket in the world, beating Falcon Heavy. But if NASA has its way, Starship could hold that title for less than 36 hours. Because notably, as early as 1.04 a.m. EDT on November 16th, a little over 35 hours after SpaceX's record-breaking Starship static fire, NASA will attempt to launch its massive SLS rocket for the third time since late August. At the explicit request of Congress, which wanted to preserve shuttle jobs after the end of the program in 2011, SLS essentially shuffles around space shuttle parts and replaces the reusable orbiter with a fully expendable rocket. The solid rocket boosters have been extended and upgraded, while the orange external tank has been stretched and turned into a liquid rocket booster affixed with four RS-25 engines to the shuttle's three. And if things go according to plan, those changes mean that the SLS rocket will produce up to 3,990 tons or 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust when it lifts off for the first time, overtaking Super Heavy B7, but also making it the second most powerful launch vehicle in history after the Soviet N1. N1 never succeeded, however, so SLS could become the most powerful rocket ever to reach orbit if its first launch is successful. But just as SLS appears poised to almost immediately unseat Starship's position as the most powerful active rocket in the world, Starship is poised to beat SLS to become the most powerful rocket ever flown, successfully or not, when it attempts its first orbital launch either next month or early next year. With all 33 Raptors at full throttle, Starship can produce almost 7,600 tons, or 16.7 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, beating the previous record holder, the Soviet N1 rocket, by nearly 60%. Even if that first launch attempt is unsuccessful, SpaceX appears to be preparing for several more rapid-fire launches that will continue until success is achieved, beating SLS's other potential record. 
SpaceX has demonstrated that ability once before with Starship when it completed five flights of five different prototypes in less than six months. As a result, it's likely that by the time SLS launches a second time in the mid-2020s, it will be the third most powerful rocket, second to N1 and Starship. That slightly awkward upset should be lessened by the fact that Starship and SLS are, for the time being, both integral parts of NASA's Artemis program. To return astronauts to the moon for the first time since 1972, SLS and its Orion spacecraft will transport NASA astronauts to lunar orbit, where they'll board a Starship-derived moon lander. Starship will then land those astronauts on the lunar surface, support about a week of surface operations, and then return them to lunar orbit, where Orion will transport them back to Earth. For now, a massive amount of work remains to be done before NASA and SpaceX will be ready to support that crewed moon landing. But Monday's Starship static fire and Wednesday's potential SLS launch both represent significant, tangible steps towards that lofty goal. As a quick note, while SpaceX is busy preparing for the orbital launch debut of its next-generation Starship rocket, it's also working around the clock to prepare several more sets of ships and boosters for the flight testing that will follow. After completing the first several proof tests on Pad A, SpaceX returned S-25 to its Starbase factory to install six Raptor engines and a series of shields and firewalls that will protect those engines from each other. Once fully outfitted, Ship 25 will return to the launch site for static fire testing and take Ship 24's place on suborbital Pad B. Ship 24 took approximately two months to go from its last cryoproof to its first static fire. But its testing got off to a relatively rocky start, so Ship 25 could be ready sooner. Booster 9, the new flying partner of Ship 25, was recently fully stacked inside the Mega Bay, gearing up for its own set of cryogenic proof tests, although the location of this test campaign is uncertain. Elsewhere, Ship 26's two main halves are now complete and waiting for stacking while Booster 10 has its methane tank fully stacked inside the Mega Bay, and grid fins have been installed on it, showing that this vehicle is progressing well in the manufacturing process. Ship 27's common dome and mid-liquid oxygen sections are now also made it together in the mid-bay. Some parts of Ship 28 have also been spotted recently in Tent 3, with its nose cone now receiving flap arrow covers and TPS tiles. Its payload bay section also received its Starlink version 2 dispenser and payload bay door just last week. Nose cones for Ship 29 and 30 have been seen lately inside Tent 3 as well. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.